Hi everyone, happy Friday or Ureshi Kenyobi for those of you in Japan and thank you so much for watching. For my third video in my series about the biggest overall contributors to increasing the quality of my life I have found up until now, which I also think will dramatically improve the quality of your life, I want to focus on nutrition. Specifically, I will give you an extremely easy year-round eating style that I think literally anyone can follow, young or old, overweight or skinny. And these eating rules will allow you to get into the best shape of your life and not only in great physical shape, but will also improve your mental health. First though, I wanted to start out with a big disclaimer that I don't have a PhD in nutrition or am I an expert in this field. In fact, this is one of the most covered topics ever on YouTube. So please feel free to find other sources of information from nutrition experts if you wanna get into the nitty gritty of how many grams of X vitamin or mineral is needed in your diet. I will also leave some links below of sources of information that I found useful for those who are interested. What I'm going to do in this video is share my own insights from the countless experimenting I've done with my own diet and the hundreds of hours of research I've done over the years to give practical, easy to understand advice that can be followed year round and isn't related to dieting or even cutting or bulking cycles. I believe that everybody should have eating principles that they can follow all year round for many reasons, but the most important ones are, A, I think it's easier to stick to because you are not constantly changing the rules of what you can and can't eat. B, you will be much more happier mentally because really no one is happy when they're dieting. And C, the results are more sustainable and long-term because when you stop the latest fad diet or even the cutting or bulking cycle, and eat the food that you were eating before the diet, you will normally lose the body improvements that you were aiming for. So I will outline the best way you can do that. Also in this video, we will cover what common misconceptions I believe a lot of people have about nutrition. Things like not understanding maintenance calories, thinking it is impossible to eat salad only for a meal, eating mostly veggies will not let you put on muscle, or eating one gram of protein for every pound of weight is the most important nutrition rule. I realize that these misconceptions are actually keeping most people from getting into the shape they want, as they certainly did for me for over 10 years. Second, I will talk about some of the discoveries I made while experimenting with my diet, which I believe would be most beneficial to you. And finally, I will explain my super simple year-round eating style that has changed my life. Great, now before we jump into it, please, please don't forget to subscribe, like, and share on your social channels, because what I would like to do is create a community of like-minded people who also are interested in being a better person. So please leave your comments or feedback below and also feel free to share anything that you've learned on the topic so we can all learn from each other. So let's jump right into some of the misconceptions that I think are pretty common even among fitness and health oriented people. First up is having a rough understanding of maintenance calories and overall calories in calories out every day. Maintenance calories is the amount of calories your body would burn even if you literally did nothing except lie in bed all day. For most people, that is about 2000 calories. Now, if you are active every day, like for example, I bike to work and all over Tokyo every day, so my maintenance calories is around 2500. Meaning if I eat 2500 calories, I probably won't gain or lose any weight. But I used to think, because I was skinny most of my life, that my maintenance calories was way higher than most guys, maybe around four or 5000 calories. Which was completely wrong. So I needed to eat a lot of food to put on muscle. Nope, all of those extra calories were mostly turning into fat. Can I tell you something without you getting angry? I love you. Yeah, you big guy. So if 2,500 is a normal day, that means on a workout day, I need to eat more calories in order to put on muscle. Or, for example, on a day that I think I'm going to drink alcohol, I should also burn calories in order to not gain fat. The next misconception I had was how much food or calories I was actually putting into my body every day and whether that was helping or hurting my fitness goals. Oh, you fat. I'm muscle. Oh, look at my little bill. Oh, he's a little Hercules. Show me muscle again. Oh, Hercules, Hercules, Hercules. Hercules. When I started understanding how many calories I was actually eating every day, it was mind blowing. Right, now, I wouldn't suggest counting calories because honestly, I don't think that's a great way to live your life. And it is easy to become obsessed with it. So by no means am I advocating for a very strict diet. But I do think it's important to have a rough understanding of how many calories you are putting into your body every day. There's lots of apps that can help you do this. 
but the one that I like to use, which is also free, is called MyFitnessPal. Using this app for a few weeks, you will start having a rough understanding of how many calories you are putting into your body, and then after that, you can decide if you want to continue using it or not. What happened to me when I started doing this is that I realized I was eating about 2,500 calories at dinner alone. This allowed me to realize that I needed about half of the food that I was actually eating. The next big misconception to overcome was that eating veggies alone was not going to fill me up. This turned out to be completely wrong, but I will note that it did take my body some time to adjust to a mostly veggie diet. I'd say it took around three to six weeks of mostly eating veggies with some protein, but I was eating a lot of salad. So normally I go to an all you can eat salad bar for lunch. When my body got used to a mostly veggie diet, I noticed a couple interesting things. First, my energy levels went up, which actually was the opposite of what I thought would happen. And second, the time it took for me to get hungry again was actually longer. Conversely, when I ate a high carby lunch, like a massive sandwich or a ton of rice, I would always be starving by five o'clock. And also I would have an afternoon energy crash. I remember when I was living in New York and working in finance and after eating a big sandwich for lunch, I would go back to my desk and be so sleepy. Sometimes I would literally fall asleep at my desk. Finally, I want to explain my healthy eating strategy, which is super simple and I think anybody can follow it. The easiest way to think about healthy eating, especially if you don't want to dive into the specific nutritional facts of what foods to include in your diet, is to simply eat all the colors of the rainbow. Just like investing, a diversity in veggies in terms of colors and types will ultimately lead to giving you the maximum health benefits. But be careful because some veggies are calorie dense so even if they are superfoods like asahi and avocados, these should be eaten in moderation. But overall, don't think too much about which vegetables to eat. Just focus on eating as many as you can and in diversity. Also, for the big eaters like I am, you can eat an enormous amount of veggies, feel satiated, and still have your calorie intake low for the day. So it is not unusual for me to eat two to three salads at lunch. Here are some examples of the amount of salad that I normally eat at one meal. So my strategy is simple, fill up on as many good veggies as I can. This allows me to have more flexibility in my diet in other places. Like for example, if I wanna have a couple drinks after work or occasionally eat the delicious bag of Haribo's. That being said, I would recommend that you target these top 10 veggies because of their high nutritional value and also their ability to keep you satiated. First is spinach, carrots, broccoli, kale, sweet potatoes, red peppers, legumes, tomatoes, pumpkins, and mushrooms. Also, I will eat only two meals a day doing intermittent fasting in the morning, and this is a subject that I will make another video about. Also, with the veggies, I will normally eat a large portion of protein. Normally chicken breasts, but also eggs or steak. Of course, sometimes I deviate from this nutrition plan, but most of the time, I would say I stick to this high protein with veggie eating strategy. Now, in case you didn't notice, the Japanese have been able to stay annoyingly skinny and fit for, well, ever. Obesity rates in Japan are dramatically less than those compared to the United States, for example, and that is largely due to the high proportion of vegetables that they eat in their diet. A few superstar Japanese veggies that I also try to incorporate into my diet and I would recommend to you is natto if you can get past the smell and stickiness. This one is actually the one that most foreigners can't stand, but its status as a superfood makes me eat it. Okra. This strange looking veggie is packed with antioxidants and anti-cancer properties. Renkun, which I'm sure I didn't say correctly, or lotus leaf, or takenoko, which is more commonly known as bamboo shoots. Now some other quick nutritional habits that I would try to follow. Number one, don't drink your calories. Even if it's 100% fruit juice, which is full of vitamins and minerals, it's also very calorie dense, not to mention the latest Starbucks seasonal drink. Also drink lots of fluids. I'll drink coffee in the morning, tea in the afternoon and water all day. And if you looked in my freezer, you would see my last nutritional tip, which is frozen fruit. Basically, that's all I have in my freezer. When I feel like eating something sweet, I will have a bowl of frozen fruit, which is full of vitamins and minerals. And also 100 grams of frozen fruit has only about 50 to 75 calories in it compared to 100 grams of your favorite candy, in my case, Haribo's, has about 350 calories. If you are interested in learning more about my nutrition journey, please feel free to leave comments below or reach out directly to me. I'd be happy to share more of what I've learned. So thank you so much for watching. Please don't forget to subscribe, like, or share these videos on your social channels. And for my next video, I will talk about the fourth most important thing that improved the quality of my life, and that would be adopting routines and habits. But I have found that by adopting routines and habits, it frees up more of your day to focus on the stuff you really need to get done.
Anyway, more on that next time.